Is everybody in? Is everybody in? The show is about to begin. Welcome to the podcast, Conscience That Made Us. Interviews and stories, tales from the bus. We love taking you back to when it all went down. The greatest live shows and that cheering crowd sound. It's concerts, concerts that made us, concerts that made us.com. Jasmine St. Clair, you're very welcome to concerts that made us. Thank you for having me on here. <laughs> You're very welcome. You're very welcome. I feel like we're going to have a very fun episode. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but that's because of my um, my rant before you started taping. Because you you this is like it's ten o'clock in the morning here in LA. Um, <clears throat> I started my day about an hour ago, kind of. So right. yeah, this is this is how the crazy train usually starts. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, you recently started a podcast. You've had an extraordinary life with some very interesting experiences and you decided to, to start a podcast. Would you like to tell the listeners about it? Um, originally, I didn't want a podcast or any of that type of things. It's just like, you have a cool one, by the way. So this doesn't okay. apply to you or anyone I know. It's just like everyone and everyone's cat has a freaking podcast. <laughs> and I, I, don't, I just didn't know. I don't want, I don't want one because like everyone even like in, insignificant that don't have anything cool to say or any talent has a freaking podcast. So I'm like, I just don't want it. Mm. So then I started the one woman show. Right. And my manager just said, yeah, you do want a podcast because that's the way, you know, you build up a bigger um, awareness. Mm. And I thought with cancel culture and just the way society is so uptight I'd love like it, I don't bring it upon myself but someone will say something and it will piss me off excuse my English and that will be the end of their day and Christmas maybe but um so my manager paired me up with this guy Greg who's awesome I love Greg because he loves heavy metal and he's so much fun to talk to and we just started it so it's all my stories um sometimes I have guests on the show like I had Terrence from Suffocation on there um i'll probably get more like just wrestlers other people i know people that have done something cool or fun or people that have you know they were the pioneers of death metal that could mm. be argued with you know cannibal corpse just like people argue over venom and like merciful fate or something what's real black metal uh <clears throat> like where did it start so yeah my whole intent with that is just to do all the stories i have uh, to bring in guests, like friends from the past and present that are cool, and maybe strange people, maybe someone, um, like maybe Lorena Bobbitt, if I'm really lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I love her, like I'm her, she's like my idol, in some ways, really? not all. Yeah. You have to I have, have a bit of strange. Some, well, someone gave me a t-shirt, they made it, it says, um, not guilty, and it has Lorena Bobbitt's mugshot. So I wore that on a date, and this guy's like, "Yeah, I gotta go." I'm like, "I'm not gonna cut anything. Like, I'm not gonna cut anything off of you. I just, it's a great shirt." Yeah, so yeah. some people have like no humor. <laughs> <laughs> I find nowadays more and more people have less and less humor. It's getting harder <laughs> to find people with a good sense of humor. I love your voice, by the way. I miss Europe. I just miss Ireland. I love Cork. Oh, like, it's like being in a fairy tale. So if I get a really good photo of Cork Ireland, my whole goal is to just pull like that whole Mary Poppins thing and just <laughs> jump through the photo and I'll be there. You've uh, you visited Cork a few times, haven't you? Yeah, I lived in London before and um, I've been to Ireland, but I just uh, my ex lived there. He had a tattoo parlor <clears throat> oh. where we're supposed to meet and go ride motorcycles, but then he moved back to the States. I'll still go there and ride a motorcycle with someone, but just not him now. <laughs> right, right. That's another love of your life, actually. Motorcycles. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a, I'm, I'm a fan myself. My uh, 
parts of my family would be bikers now that always be into bikes. I've yet to get one myself, but it's like on my bucket list. You got to do it. Like if you don't do it, <clears throat> you'll never know what that real freedom is. And I think like it's something, it's, it's one of those things, if a guy dates me, he has to know how to ride or want to. My ex that I was with for like six years, that's the only cool thing he got. <clears throat> one of the cool things he got from me. And I don't think he does it now uh, or as much. Hi, say hi, Enzo. Oh, hi. it's lovely. And um, cool name. he's cute. And um, yeah, so he, I don't think he rides as much because I think when most men end up getting married or having kids or something, they just, for whatever reason, don't want to ride as much anymore. Yeah, yeah. I've noticed that with people I know. It's like they feel like they have to settle down and take less risks, I suppose. Ugh, no, I just, you're never going to get 100% of what you want in a relationship, but I feel as though 60% is fine, but you have to love metal and ride motorcycles and have a career. I don't support yeah. anyone anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> it's Back. true, but yeah, that's one thing. So crazy trainers with a K to everyone listening, because obviously I'm not all there myself. <laughs> And um, I just wanted to mention some of the, the stories. They're very entertaining. There was one episode I listened to and you were talking about Motley Crue and a hot tub. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and this is a real jersey, by the way. The most annoying thing is when you see these hipsters and these kids that weren't even like a sperm in their dad's ball sack wearing a freaking jersey. It's like, can I just run you down and ask you name one song off that album or one song from that show? And of course you can't do that because in today's society, oh, that's like so insensitive. How could you do that? Yeah, that was fun. That Molly Cruz story was really weird. Um, Because one thing, uh, I was never into the guys. I was always into the music more than anything else. The only musician I've ever really dated was Lemmy from Motorhead. And he's one of the most fascinating, interesting people. Like I, I was very lucky to know on that level. Um, and we remained friends, but the Motley Crue thing was just such a fluke thing. And I had no idea that was Vince Neil. Like you look one way, you look hot one way. Okay. You look semi hot then, but I don't think I thought they were as hot because all the girls liked them. And this was more my friend with her, you know, with her fuckery that wanted to do something. And like, yeah, we went to the room, big deal. (laughs) I could say I was in a hot tub naked with them, but that's like, as far as I'll go. Um, right. but just like, I think I, I didn't really know much about egos back then, male egos. Then it took me like 20 something years later to learn about that. And I think it was more the fact that we, um, we bruised his ego. We bruised Ben Snail's ego, mm. but to have like your, your like wannabe should night NWA bodyguard, like threaten us because we don't want to hang out with you. Like what's up with that? Yeah. It's a bit childish. Well, I think his ego was as big as his belly <laughs> back then. I don't know Probably. what he looks like now. I saw him at the Key Club like years later with um, Wasp. Mm. Yeah. That's when we had good shows in Hollywood and nice. uh, like original shows. Sorry, there's just a fire truck leaving. I can't see the firemen, but I'm assuming they're hot. Um, <laughs> and it was just a weird thing. You know, I met Nikki Sick also that same weekend at the same uh, the same thing in Vegas. And I took photos with him. But some of those guys, I like, remember the Poison album cover? It looked like yeah. four hot girls. When I yes. saw the Motley throughout, yeah, you knew those weren't girls. Those are just hot guys with makeup on. Um, you know, like, did they get it from the whole corpse paint thing from black metal? Did they do it to themselves? But just hanging out with one of those members in a hot tub was a totally different experience. It's like... It was really cheap in a way because he knew that that dick had been everywhere all over Hollywood. But at the same time, it was cool because I tried to have like a normal conversation um, with him in a way about other things. But I guess yeah. when they see that you're like, oh, it's a porn star. It's like this whole other thing. I, I get that. I would yeah. do the same way too if I were. A- <laughs> I'd be like the worst guy ever, I feel. So, yeah. <laughs> but Gosh. I love the music still. I wonder, yeah. like, how many tours do you think they're going to do till they actually retire? 
you have the Kiss tour, and like my friend is working on that as a costumer. Right. How many tours till they actually retire? I think about 11 or 12 years ago, I was actually at Kiss's farewell tour, <laughs> and they're still going. It's they'll never stop, you know. Every year it's the farewell tour. They're just really milking it now. Yeah, I dated a member from Kiss once. It wasn't like who everyone would think. <clears throat> right. It was like maybe two dates, but um I got bored. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really got bored. <laughs> you don't seem um, like uh, the boring type now, I have to say. Me? No, no, Kiss. They don't seem like they'd be uh, boring to date. <laughs> you don't well, need um, I met through my friend Missy Hyatt because I was wrestling and I told her what a big fan I was and he showed up this specific member showed up at one of my uh appearances with these two blondes and like he looked the same kind of but he had a hairpiece or whatever it looked like a beaver tail and I said yeah I want to meet you but just not like like not like this type of thing like you might think might happen and he was calling me to like 5 a.m in my hotel room where I was staying so another girlfriend of mine knew him I said Gene you know this just really isn't this isn't what I want like I love your music and I respect everything you've done mm. um like I have vintage shirts I have vintage albums as well so I still have my love gun with the gun Dress to oh. kill you have like the stick on tattoos yeah, yeah. at my mom's place and <clears throat> it was fun like I think Gene Simmons is cool but I just didn't want to like go there or there yeah so I went out with someone else from the band on a couple of days and I met that guy at the kiss convention oh, it was yeah. cute it wasn't it's not for me though but like <laughs> um I think if I were to date a guy in a band now it'd have to be someone scandic like a big viking right. guy <laughs> 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 right right <laughs> the, well i'm not uh, really into american guys anyway everyone knows that but yeah 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 okay okay um you mentioned t-shirts before we get into your your concert experiences i really like how you feel about concert t-shirts because that's like my major thing every concert or show i go to i have to get a t-shirt as a souvenir and i have a massive collection of them now at the moment and i loved what you said on your show about all your collection of uh, of t-shirts yeah it's important like my exodus toxic waltz one I'm wearing it. So just tell me why there's some like guy with a bitch bun going down the street wearing an Exodus shirt. I didn't really say anything. <clears throat> then I just like gave him a dirty look. I was this close to coming up to him and ripping that freaking thing off his head and saying, how did you get that shirt? You know, because mm. hipsters are nothing more than boring middle of the road people who bear the image of a badass that haven't yeah. really done anything cool. Um, but yeah, he had an Exodus shirt on. It looked like a newer one. I don't think he knew anything about the toxic waltz or fabulous disaster. Mm. And like when you see certain people wearing them, like the Kardashians, I found out that their metal, their um, their wardrobe person is a metalhead. Right. Now we know metalheads are extremely loyal and it's it's kind of dumb to think like a poser will get that loyal fan base. It just doesn't work that way. Mm. And you look like a plastic headed freaking sea donkey. So you're not going to get them. Trust me. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Over here, we actually have a, a store. I'm not sure you might have seen it one one of your visits to Cork. It's called Pennies. It's yeah. like... um. You're, you know, yes. Yeah, so I know the star. The last couple of years, they have been doing like knockoff T-shirts of like the Stones, Nirvana, you know, Motley Crue, uh, and yeah. you always see these like 16, 17 year old people going around wearing those T-shirts, and you're like, as you said, tell me one, it, tell me one of their songs. <laughs> you know, it just it wrecks my head. It's so annoying. It's gross. And that's part of what's wrong with society today is they don't have good original music. Yeah. They really don't. Let alone, like, everyone's doing a remake of this show, that show, something like this. How about let's just get original? And I just, it's annoying, you know? It's like, go get a freaking shirt of, like, something you really like and listen to. So my friend, um, he made the shirt for me, the Lorena Bobbitt one. Now, long before I knew about Gary Holt's T-shirt, 
I said to this guy, he has a company called Morbid Empire. So just like, if anyone can, I know it's a cheap plug. I'm really sorry. But just <laughs> since we're on that topic, go to his Facebook page. Um, we were, I ran into him and I bought a blue velvet t-shirt uh, <laughs> from the movie. <laughs> so I said, you got to make one that says slaughter the Kardashians or kill the Kardashians. And I said, you should take like that nice black and white photo of Mama Bear mm. and the skanks and like just bloody it do something <laughs> and he did it's a slot of the kardashians they have oh. men's shirts but i have the baby tee it's like one of my favorite t-shirts and i wore it to an acting class like last year or the mm. year before that when we had in person which have now gone back someone got offended oh man i'm like you i said so you're gonna you support like people like that you know they don't have talent they'll never mm. go to a class let alone have any so that's like really the guy by the way she dropped out of school like a week later and i don't think she's done much since then mm. um you were to like an improv school people are going to get it and they don't give a shit but to like a serious like meisner or strasburg class this happened in a strasburg class not meisner all right that's where the girls asked her yeah she was like some kind of um i'm an influencer and like uh, my boyfriend's a football player yeah like that so you don't influence me <laughs> so <laughs> oh god i uh I really can't stand people like that. I hate the whole term influencer. It just, you know, go get a real right? job, you know? I could pay for like followers too, but I don't. I put like a lot of beauty products and things there. And yeah, some companies like they give me stuff, but I wouldn't post it unless I'm using it. So anything I have yeah. posted, I really do use like all the skin and hair things, um, the migraine things, all that stuff. I use it. So mm. People send me shit all the time. I just don't post it if I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like you yourself, you can be an influencer. You you know, you're famous mm -hmm. for something else. You've got a, a big career behind you. You know, you deserve yeah. to be able to do that, put stuff up. Never mind like an 18 year old who has never aspired <laughs> to anything more than being an influencer, you know? Well, I should just have a cult. That's what I'll do. But the funny <laughs> thing is like when I did my one woman show, and even like these young kids that are in my acting classes, they're like, oh, like they learn about who you are, but they just really don't care. And it's these young girls, wow, that's so cool. Like, I want to hear about stories in your life. Yeah, because you'll never live the 90s again. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of shock culture is what my podcast is. So, you know, try to fucking cancel me. Let's see you do that. OK, A, I'm not big enough to be canceled. But when I do get that big, you're going to be canceled. You can go suck my ass. No one's going to cancel me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are a lot of people who buy into that. And I think people are getting really sick of it because people come to this country for that very reason of free speech. And you are not allowed to do that. You are not allowed to be this or that. And a lot of the youth today, they are highly under-informed. That's why I say no one uh, under the age of 21 votes. And secondly, they should have a quiz before you vote to know the real um, initiatives of people. Like with that Gavin campaign, I was heavily for getting rid of Gavin Newsom because he has made a complete gross shit show of California and people are underinformed. They're like, oh, well, all Republicans and all moderates want um, the death penalty. No, that is not true. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to like get rid of the homeless off the streets, lower taxes and break businesses back. So there's a young kid at the gym that I go to who had um, something for the recall he saw me sign it and just gave me this look. I said, look, do you really know what this is about? And I had to explain everything. He's like, you know, I really appreciate you for explaining this to me because I had no clue. He signed the recall petition, but then I was at the gym, uh, let's say yesterday, and the same kid was working there. It's weeks later, and he's reading this whole book on like politics and these articles. So he's like, yeah, they're trying to build some interim like home, like housing here for people leaving prison and leaving a, shell, a, ho a homeless shelter. That's a halfway house. I'm like, exactly. And I didn't even tell you anything. Mm -hmm. So it's just a lot of misinformation, just like with metal. And, you know, people get so caught up with the um, drinking the Kool-Aid of things. Like I drank a cool, the Kool-Aid when I was like 10 that the Black Sabbath show, they're gonna kill a live puppy before they go on stage. And that mortified me, mm. you know?
Yeah. Then you look at Witchcraft Coven, who I, I really would love to see Witchcraft Coven live in person because I love Jinx. I think she's like gorgeous and yeah. amazing. But do they really have a satanic ritual? Like, do you know anyone that's seen Witchcraft Coven at all? I actually don't. I actually <laughs> You're don't. probably too young. Like, what are you, 22 <laughs> or something? <laughs> Jeez, thanks. No, I'm uh, I'm 34. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> We'll, um, we better move on to your concerts, actually. I could spend <laughs> okay. hours talking to you like this, but I know I you've got crazy. other engagements today. But um, your very first experience, concert experience, what was it? It would be Black Sabbath, the Mob Rules Tour. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Madison Square Garden. And uh, how, did you, how did you end up getting into Black Sabbath? Uh, my babysitter. Now that's a babysitter I want. <laughs> yeah, she was hot too, I think. Um, I think she's on my Facebook, but she, uh, like I already had a satanic Bible. My mom let me have one. Just, you know, we weren't practicing anything. It's just because you're a kid and she always like raised me to look at like whatever. You just, you're allowed to do this and mm. you're curious. Here you go. I wasn't exactly running like rituals in my bedroom with pentagrams. Yeah um so my uh she was from france mm. and at the time i was at the lycée francais i was at uh, the french school and i'd um, gone off to another private school so i was still keeping up with my french yeah so she was in this program doing that and uh she was babysitting me she mm. did ask my mom that you know i have two tickets for black sabbath so can i take her tonight so i went there was not marijuana. There are a lot of like hot, long haired guys. And that's when I like had this whole fascination with long haired guys, metalheads. Yeah. Um, we went, we're like maybe fourth or fifth, like fifth row, something like really close to the stage. And I was freaking out about the puppy already, even though there was no puppy. Mm. Um, you know, it was a very distinct memory in my head because everything just seems so larger than life yeah yeah people kind of like seeing a little kid at a concert it would at that age as well like it's, it must have been very overwhelming in a sense you know being so young and yeah. massive crowd and a band like that as well it was big just the experience alone was big just watching them on stage and the music um and my mob rules baseball jersey, like I still have it somewhere, and it fit me like a dress. Um, nice. And my babysitter was hot, and these men were talking to her, and you know, she was pretty uh, <laughs> strict. And I'm working right now, and you cannot talk to me. I'm with the child. So oh. it just, it was really cool. And I feel like that made it, that, that's what got me turned on to more things, like more doom metal, if that's what you'd like to call it, is doom metal. And I wanted every Black Sabbath album. So I started buying Black Sabbath. And then from there, it just got to like what Iron Maiden. Um, I looked up more doom metal bands then. So that's how I learned about Witchcraft Coven. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like intrigued. It's a, it's a dark side of things that I feel intrigue people. Mm. And that concert, although I don't want to see a little baby puppy get put to death, um, even though I feel like killing my cat sometimes because he does things he's not supposed to. Not done. I, I was curious. I was a kid. I was 10 in New York City. Um, the adults around me were like my mom, my dad, my grandma, and then my babysitter. And I was skip rated at that point once. So I had older people around me. So going to a show and seeing what the adults, well, the adults do, mm. it was something else. And it was really special. Uh, then after years of that, you know, years later, I see Ronnie James do, I see Ozzy, and you tell him, yeah, I, I went to the Black Sabbath for Mob Rules. I think, who was that singing then? Was it Dio on that tour? I think it would have been, would have. Yeah. And I saw him in Norway years later when I lived there uh, with his band. I saw him at the yeah. Ritz in New York City. Uh, I saw him when it was Rowan. Who was the new guitarist? Ian Ap Ian. Ro Rowan something. Well, he was cute then. Uh, and I saw Ingve. Like I'd seen a lot of great shows after that, but I feel like that's what really turned my music into the 
um, more heavy stuff at 10 yeah. years old, being at that impressionable age where you see that. And everyone else, like I still listen to disco and gangster rap and things like that, but good gangster rap from the 90s. Uh, I listened to everything. My mom taught me never like insult other people's taste. That's why I just don't do that. Mm. Um, I've never done that growing up as a kid. I think people should just like what they like, but don't push it on me like MGK and that crap. Um, yeah. Ugh. Mm. So I would say Black Sabbath is what really turned me on to everything. And then it turned me on to the whole British metal. Yeah, yeah. Now, my first painted jacket um, was Iron Maiden, Killers. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was uh, my boyfriend then was this Irish mobster. And uh, I think he had to have some kind of gig on the side. So he was doing tattoos. It's not the same tattoo artist, the one in Ireland, but... Right, right. Uh, he took my denim jacket from me. It had like a Saxon patch, a Megadeth patch, um, a bunch of stuff. And then, uh, yeah, I painted the Killers album cover. After that, it was Manowar. Um, which album was it? Kings of Metal. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I want another painted jacket. I just don't know what I'd want. Would I want Dissection? Would I want King Diamond? I'd probably take a Dissection painted jacket because you have to really be into metal and good yeah. stuff to know what that is. Yeah, yeah, I get you. I get you. I have to ask, though, um, with Black yeah. Sabbath, Dio or Ozzy? Don't do this to me. <laughs> um, <sighs> Tough question, I know. Um, Dio. Really? I like Ozzy, but I had a personal experience with Sharon. Yes. Uh, I was on Ozfest one tour. My boyfriend at the time was drumming and Slayer, Paul Bostaff. Hmm. amazing talented human like i think i really hope things work out for him the way he's deserved in life because he's great uh all around and um i remember it was the end of the Ozfest tour it was rob zombie ozzy osborne slayer oh man and i was around you'd seen me around the tour i and you, i met the black sabbath guys the crew guys are really cool hmm. i loved seeing ozzy it was a real privilege to see him with black sabbath then yeah i'd say so i felt bad for him because it just looked like he was kind of slowly you know mm. yeah yeah he's a great showman but i feel as though his wife is extremely rude and unnecessarily so she'd seen me and it was the last day after the show last day of the tour and there was a party. So I had Paul's pass temporarily. And mm. she stands there at the front. And she's seen me a couple hours before. Oh, Paul, you look really good, Paul. So I don't know if you're supposed to be here. Whose pass is this? How do you have Paul's pass? I said, well, I'm his girlfriend. I've been on the show and we just met. Mm. And I, I was speaking to your son the other day to Jack. Well, I don't know. I don't think you can come in here. I've got to take that pass from you. So I don't even know if I'm the accent right. Was she Cockney or some shit? Yeah. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. Cockney accent. Yeah. So then the black, the crew guys were there. They saw her like, no, Sharon, just let her in. She's fine. She gives me this dirty look. Fine. You can go pool, but you might want to get your own pass. Yeah, Sharon, it's the last day of the tour. So that's mm. not happening. And it just left a bad taste in my mouth that I have a lot of respect for what she's done for him. Mm. I have respect for their relationship, whatever that may be. But as a person dealing with the public and dealing with others, I feel as though there's some bitterness in her for maybe things he may and may have not done with other women at some point in time. But you don't go taking that out on other people because it's your husband's thing. Hmm. Um, you know, I was friendly with Randy Castillo when I first moved to LA. And we used to hang out all the time. And he would tell me stories. but I just don't, I just have a bad taste in my mouth after that about whatever controls him to do what he does. But he's yeah. an excellent showman and he's a very talented person. 
and very memorable in all of our youth. So I went to the Bark at the Moon tour. Like, why the hell didn't he get coronavirus if, if it was really from a bat? Okay. So <laughs> yeah. um, I just didn't, I thought it was really disgusting. And that's kind of why I don't think I'd really have warmed up to Black Sabbath with Ozzy. Mm. Ozzy. Uh, but I, I think it was right there by I like Dio because Dio reminds me of a leprechaun and leprechauns remind me of rainbows and magic. And I liked his albums. I like Dream Evil. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought he was great. He was larger than life on stage. I thought Ozzy was great too, but if I have to say, I'm just, I'm just going to go with Dio just because of that plain thing with Sharon. Yeah, I wouldn't blame you. I'd say a lot of people would be the same. She, she never comes across as a people person anyway she's all business and you know she would be rude to you you know if you met her in person she just she seems like one of them i don't want to say nasty but there's probably no better word you know she seems like an absolutely nasty person you know yeah and i get business i mean because one thing i've been known for is when i was like in the adult business i wasn't there to make friends i was there to make money and do what i have to do and I made a couple of friends along the way that are actually fabulous people doing extremely well um, with other things, you know, that I have a lot of respect for. And, you know, they found love, they found marriages, they found great careers, you know, whatever it is that they've wanted. They've had their blessed lives. You know, here I am talking about satanic albums and saying blessed in the same <laughs> paragraph. Um, and, you know, it's just a thing. It's just you can you can still you don't have to be nasty to everyone throwing around your power cock or whatever it is you want to throw around. And I heard about that scandal a few years ago, allegedly with Ozzy and some hairdresser. But my friend also writes for their TV show oh, for yeah. their unscripted reality show. Yeah. Oh yes, yes, the unscripted one. So, he hates it, by the way. <laughs> really? I'd say, oh. <laughs> it's not a job I'd like. I'd hate to have to deal no. with her day in, day out. It, uh, I doubt many people last too long, you know, in business. I think Jack's great. Yeah, he He's comes great. across very yeah. friendly and down to earth and very warm. He must have got it from <laughs> Ozzy. So, um, yeah, that's it for Black Sabbath. I mean, and I saw it and just like, after that, it was all downhill. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But I am spoiled by shows because when I moved to Norway, my very first show in Norway uh, before Inferno Festival was enslaved, doing an acoustic set oh. at a place at a park in Akabriga. And um, yeah, no, not Akabriga. Uh, we were in Frogna at the park and they did a very beautiful acoustic set and I got to meet them. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. That's uh, That must have been a it was beautiful. Yeah, I was just going to say it must have been a beautiful experience. Um, and festivals in Europe are run so much more. Like my favorite one is Bloodstock. I think Vicky is amazing. She's a wonderful, like she's a powerhouse in everything she does. Mm. And like Sharon could take an example in class and business from her. Yeah. And uh, also Adam's amazing. Her brother, like it's a very good festival. And I love going there. I just haven't been in a while. So I just have to, last time I was supposed to go, it was all this nightmare with this airline and just, ugh. So I will go again, hopefully this summer, now that things are back to normal. And, yeah. uh, you know, because I really am a huge fan of just how they run things there inside, like from top to finish. Yeah. Yeah. I've always wondered that actually festivals compared to America to Europe, which <laughs> one was organized here. <laughs> really? Totally disorganized. Yeah. <laughs> they don't eat. I mean, it's really disorganized for the most part. Sounds of the Underground was good, but I, I feel like the festivals, it's a European thing. And I would go, I would go to a cold to a festival in the cold weather there. I worked with Inferno Festival for a few years in Norway. Hmm. And that was quite an honor. Um, you know, working with them because they're very good people. I love the owners there and uh just the staff in general. They're a great group of people. Yeah, yeah. What would you say was the best experience you've ever had at a concert? Come on, everyone who's been in the experience. Okay, uh, best experience, let's see. Um, Enzo, what's the best experience? Oh, that's what you haven't even born yet. Uh, let's see. Um, best experience. Oh, okay, yeah, when I was 16. Right, right. I went to see Iron Maiden. Oh. And I made friends with my neighbor. She's a bartender. 
Mm. My mom was out of town and I got to go backstage. I have the photos still. Now, French is like my second language. And hang on, is that a fire ambulance again? Some freaking homeless person probably setting fire to something. Um, oh. So yeah, don't even get me started. Uh, I should run for mayor, but uh, <laughs> when I saw Iron Maiden, it was great. So Yannick Gers had just started playing. Mm. And it was my first time meeting a band backstage. I got to speak French with Bruce Dickinson. Plus he also, oh. I took fencing before too at that time. Yeah. And I got to, um, I don't know. It was like, we were talking about fencing. We were talking French and he's so hot. Like <laughs> I'm sure he's married, but he is the only person, like only like one of the few guys in metal I think are extremely hot, like in so many ways because of his <laughs> French expertise and he can fly a plane. Um, plus he's British. Uh, so I would say Maiden, and I have to pick a second one. I'm sorry. Okay. Amana Marth. Right, right. Well, you... they, I love their Viking ship. I just want to go sailing on it. Just take <laughs> me away. No, they're, they're very powerful life. I got it's so, it's such a tough question you gave me children of both i'm like i don't know what that was then but i just oh it's hard to narrow it down and i, I like suffocation when they had frank but i really feel as though having that experience at 16 and meeting maiden was amazing i was gonna say priest like the last show but um my friend took me who owns a record label or who runs one my friend al and i wasn't eating that i don't really eat a lot during the day and i had some tequila Mm. We were like third or fourth row in and Judas Priest is there. Like Rob Halford comes out in the motorcycle, which I love. <laughs> I was already really drunk and I started screaming at him. I want you wanted you to be my leather daddy, baby. You're so <laughs> I was I was hitting on Rob Halford. Not I just yeah. Anyway, uh there are parents there with their kids. Some woman like put her hands over his ears and gives me this dirty look. I'm oh, like, man. what? <laughs> 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 But yeah, that was, I don't know. I've had interesting experiences, but I would say seeing Maiden at 16 and meeting them was great. Yeah, yeah, I could imagine. And they were so imagine. nice. They took really? photos of, and there were such lovely people, um, all of them. Mm. Yeah. Yannick yeah, they... was really cool too. What, whatever happened to Yannick Garris anyway? I forgot. I... Is he still with them? Yeah. He looked hot then too. <laughs> What about now? Do you th still think they, they look hot in their older years? Um, Bruce definitely does. Like I said, it's definitely about looking super hot, but then also interesting. And he's interesting to me. Yeah. So, you know, like we had this discussion about Lemmy before. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the others look like. I, Steve Harris, I actually, I ran into him a few years ago. Um, yeah, I guess they're pretty hot. They're very talented. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll, I see um, guys like my own age at the shows, though. And it's like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> they're fucking balding. Excuse my English, but they're balding and stuff. Some of them look good. You know, they're muscular. They're, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> I get really? bored really easily if guys like super easy, like you've got to somehow be into traveling. It once like someone eliminates certain foods, like if you eliminate spicy foods or not even open to trying like spicy Indian food, not like curry from hell or something. Yeah. I just like, I don't know. I just, I just can't be around someone that's into just flat out steak and potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> even though I like Guinness pies, I love, like British food, and I love that whole culture of those pies. If you jump up here, I swear to God. Okay, so yeah, it's a cat. So yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I our food <laughs> is it is great, but it's a bit a bit bland compared to other foods. You have to, you know, mix it up, and you can't close anything off. Really, you have to try spicy food. You have to, you know, variety. Well, with the British, there's a British place down the street from me called the King's Head. I go there now and again for tea time because it's fun. Right. Um, I could I can't even finish like half the stuff on that plate. Um, then <laughs> I go to uh, they have the shepherd's pie. Hold on, 
So who's calling me here? Hold on. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh, you're back. Yeah, sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Hold on. Enzo, you need to stop because I'm busy. So here. <laughs> okay. He's getting jealous. Um, I feel as though, okay, so what I do with the British food, I live near the King's Head, so I go there for tea time, mm. even though I'm not even able to finish like a half or quarter of the food there. <laughs> uh, then I just like the experience, and mm. I miss going to St. James's Park and being able to do that. Uh, then they have the Guinness, the shepherd's pie. So I'll get like spicy mustard with it. Oh. Um, like don't fool yourself. I like like the Sainsbury's like angel cake. I love stuff like that. I'm mm. all about it. Yeah. Uh, but I like, I like foods from different cultures, like wherever I am. So let's say I'm in Ireland. I want to have what you have. I don't want to go there and have like Indian food or like kebabs. I don't want that. Okay. Even when I'm yeah. drunk. <laughs> I want to have your food just what's there if I'm in India I want to have Indian food but I've never been to India but I do believe in England you have amazing Indian food because there's a huge Indian population mm, yeah and it's uh, really lovely the food there it's very different yeah yeah I often wondered is this if you went to India would it be the same type of food or would it be completely different because I've heard well I've had an authentic Indian there's a restaurant down the street from here and it's extremely different than when they Americanized the food Mm. uh they they just infuse it and make it they're catering to americans and i understand that but then that's when you have to have a menu where you, you kind of know who you're dealing with when they sit down yeah. Yeah. um they have the different levels of spiciness and so forth but i like almost everything i'm like by no means a vegan like mm. most people would expect me to be um yeah i'm a carnivore <laughs> all the way <laughs> oh i am um... Yeah, I'd be similar myself. I'd uh, I could never close myself off to meat or even close myself off to certain foods. You know, it's a, it yeah. seems like a very boring way of life. Yeah, it is. But uh, the last couple of questions, then I always find the answers to these, the answers that I get for these, very interesting. If you could see any band or musician from history in concert for one night only, who would it be? Um. God damn you. <laughs> Let you. Let's see. Uh, Motorhead. Let me. Yeah, I can. I can see that. All right. I, it's such a close connection we had. And let's like I was in New Zealand once at Comic Con. I didn't even know Motorhead was there. And someone hmm. told me and I just showed up backstage and the idiot working security little jarhead. He had no idea who Motorhead was. I said, well, just get the oh, tour manager, please, for the man, the headliner. Well, who's, I said, the headliner, Motorhead. Oh, them. I said, yes. So he brought him up. They called, oh, yeah, just come on back. And I just remember having like a shot of Jack Daniels or the Jack and Coke with Lemmy. Then like less than a minute later, you see him there on stage. I feel as though he was an enigma and someone that was, just, I, I think I just miss him as a person. And that's like one musician. Also his performances were wonderful. That is mm. a band with that specific front man I'd want to see. Yeah. Then there'd be Jimi Hendrix after, but him, yes. Yeah. With Lemmy, was there a, a thing of, you know, there's the man and then there's the persona or was he the exact same in his personal life as he was known to be on stage? Um, I would say slightly, yeah. He was a really gentle human being. Mm. Uh, any like person, he's really good at picking up on people and knowing what they were about, you know. Yeah. And uh, he'd say comments. I remember one of the last tours when he came to Norway. I went to see him, and we were hanging out. Um, mm. Even after this show like I just this is going to sound creepy and weird people like listeners could take back whatever they want to from this uh I actually spent the night with him in the hotel but it's not like what you think it's just right. someone to talk to and sit up with all night uh I passed out and that's all it is it wasn't anything more 
is it inappropriate because I had a boyfriend at that time? Yeah, but he was a shitty boyfriend who was like all over town doing God knows what. He was like a personal trainer at the gym. So what do you expect? Yeah. And he was small, like super like, what the hell am I doing with you? <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, just let me, it was just like having an old friend that you just snuggled up with, just like slept with someone who knew you. Cause this yeah. guy didn't even really know me that he knew me, but he didn't know me, know me because people get so stupid and judgmental. Um, yeah. So it's just, I saw him as a very tender and nice person outside of all that. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like some very special memories you have with yeah, him. Absolutely. Um, the next it's question. a shame not anyone could, not everyone could be like him, but I could say, uh, you know, I knew God. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I, I agree. I, I agree. The next question it's kind of odd now what, after what you've said about Lemmy, but uh, I usually ask if you could spend 24 hours in a room with any musician or band from history, who would it be? Just you and them. Um, hmm. Dead or Alive, the band? Like, is the band Dead or Alive? Yep, Dead Are or they... Alive. Oh. Yeah. Uh, dissection right right why uh why'd you pick them because i love their albums and whenever i like all the artwork um it was definitely like a darker side of black metal at that time when they came out and it's very sad what happened uh to john not but mm. i feel as though they had some really great music and tunes and i don't i'm glad they weren't as mainstream as uh Some of these, actually, no, I, I take that back. Sorry. I was at the guest store like last year hmm. in New York City and someone was making metal shirts, but they ripped off part of their artwork on a t-shirt. I, I told whoever was in charge, like or whoever does their marketing, it's like whatever it was, what, what I saw and I took photos of it. But um, I just feel as though they didn't get the recognition they deserved. Um, and they're one of the best bands of all time. Hmm. Every time I listen to their CDs, uh, and it's in my iPod. I feel as though I'm on some dark mystical journey <laughs> through the ice ages. And it was perfect. Like the music was perfect. Yeah. Yeah. A bit um, long sometimes, but perfect. <laughs> that doesn't matter how long it is, as long as it's good. And Children of Bodom would be next. <laughs> really? <laughs> I had to throw that in. Yeah. <laughs> I like them a lot. I like their, their music and their shows. Plus, yeah. I think the bass player was super hot. Okay. okay. I didn't make a move on this guy. So, I, just, you know, I, I, I was interviewing a lot of these bands, so don't forget. So, yeah. it wasn't worth it to be that person. There's enough of those girls out there already. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. <laughs> <laughs> um, For sure. If you, could, uh, if you could pick any song to appear on the soundtrack to your life, what would it be? If there was a song that could sum up your life perfectly, I know that's a really tough question to sp spring on you. But... <laughs> so right now we're using Notorious from Lizzie Borden, L okay. Lizzie Borden, um, for my outro and intro music on the podcast. That's, <laughs> um, I don't think it's. Uh... I don't, I mean, I don't know. There is no soundtrack, really. I dare someone to do it, though. Uh, I really do. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I like Notorious because, yeah, I mean, I have that weird notoriety, mm. weird fame. That's the name of the one woman shows a weird kind of fame, but I don't know. Because there's just so many aspects we're dealing with, and um, you're making me think way <laughs> too early in the morning. Uh, me against the I don't know. I don't think there really is. Right, right. So someone just has to do it. So any band out there should just do it. Because there's so many elements of a jasmine in so many different albums yeah. out there. You know, you have Me Against the World by Lizzie Borden, because at times I felt like the underdog. And 
you know, since Vice TV came out with that dark side of the 90s, I'm sitting there just this past weekend on Saturday with a friend having dinner and this, am I allowed to say the B word on here? Yep, yeah, you can. This freaking nasty bitch just keeps looking over at me, looking over, okay, I'm like, maybe she likes me shorter, so blah, blah, blah. And she's like rolled her eyes. So I went over to them. Hmm. I said, can I help you with something? Like, are you okay? Because I see you keep looking over here. Yeah. And her husband is, oh, no, no, you know, she's just wondering. I see her drink arise at the table. I took her drink and just drank it and put it down and went back to my table. <laughs> so they started freaking out about COVID. I said, I'm not transmitting to you something I do not have. Hmm. But just don't go looking at people unless you're prepared to say something or get into it with me. And I know it's like, I just, I've been in, just like, she's just staring. You know, I saw that thing and blah, blah, blah. I said, thank you. Mm. I said the nineties are one of the best eras ever that you'll probably never, ever have a chance to live. Yeah. And it's the same dirty looks I was getting back in the nineties and I don't give a shit. I really don't care. And I just don't. <laughs> You're right too. Life you know, is too short to worry about other people think. That's exactly. And that's when you get a whole me against the world thing. And it's just, uh, you know, they're just not on our page. They're not as cool as we are. Exactly. You know, and with metal, I know Lizzie Borden is the first band I took. I, they killed me on stage the first time I got to see them play at the Reseda Country Club. Yeah. Then I took photos with Lizzie with his hands over my boobs. I had my Raiders jersey on. Yeah, it was just, it was a wild night. But <laughs> kind of notorious, yeah, I'm notorious for God knows what. I was like, I've done so many things mm. with my life, more outside of the adult business, but people always bring it back to that, which is fine. I don't give, I don't really care. But the thing is, it's it is what it is and I, I just it doesn't bother me but i think people's rudeness because i wasn't raised as a child to stare at people like that hmm. yeah i wasn't raised to criticize what other people's views on politics or music are or their way or what they like like what they dress i just wasn't raised to do that i don't do it um is a lot of it here in california where people bash you for this or that and i don't think that's right it's not rock and roll you know? Yeah, you have to have um, respect for others. That's something a lot of young kids lack these days. You know, I was in New York a couple of weeks ago and I was on the train. This kid didn't want to get up to give this old man his seat. He's like on the phone. I went over to him. I said, so aren't you going to get up and give him your seat? Oh, yeah. You know, my leg hurts. I said, yeah. I said, this is an elderly man. He was a vet too. He had like his hat on. He's like barely struggling. He had one leg oh, and he's struggling on a freaking subway. It's like, I just wanted to pull him off of there and pay for his Uber to wherever, you know? Yeah. But it just, finally the kid got up. Mm. I made him get up in my own way, which is a pretty bold thing to do, but I don't, I really don't care. Yeah. And it's just, I don't know. So there, to answer your question, sir, <laughs> there is no song whatsoever. Um, that will ever describe my life. And I'm totally, I'm glad. Because wouldn't that be boring if there's a sign, if there's a song to like describe your whole life? Yeah, actually, there, when you put it like that, it would be <laughs> sum up your entire life in like a three and a half minute song. That's uh, that sounds like it's not exactly a very fulfilled life. It can be if it can be summed up like that, you know. Maybe born to be wild. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you say it. <laughs> well, no, that's an inside joke too. Um, there's this Austrian guy that used to go to my gym who had a motorcycle. Mm. And I, I'm very immature if you can't tell already. It's probably because I've never had kids. I don't want kids. I don't really care for them. But I just live. If I wasn't like immature, I don't think I would have gotten through a lot of things. Mm. But um, I should take drugs, though. But, I don't. but uh, then he would come to the gym and then he was <laughs> he was asking me like he wanted to get into adult films at that time. So just to mess with him, I gave him the phone number of this guy that did um, gay porn. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he looked like Stephen Wolf a little bit. That's like this whole inside joke thing. So as a joke, me and my friend changed the words to um, from born to be wild to Austrian ass <laughs> because of him. I know, I know. I do that a lot. <laughs> just, you know, you have to do this shit. You know, it's just, yeah. you may raise a few eyebrows in public, but whatever. 
yeah, exactly. There was a, there was something I was wanting to ask yeah. you, actually. I'd nearly forgot. Would you have preferred if there was internet back in the 90s the way there is now? Or No. No. <laughs> That's the whole part of my mystique is I was born before that whole era. That whole Jasmine was born way before that era. And it's the mystique of it. Not things like recorded. I feel as if there's too much liberty with people and their camera phones. Uh, just like not too long ago, I was with some friends that have motorcycles and I was with hanging out with some of them at a bar and uh, there was a, something happened. I think some, someone uh, said something stupid to him and was touching his patches on his vest and all that. And there was, you know, they started a fight with them and with my friend and uh, went to the parking lot and some bitch had her phone up there. I just knocked the phone out of her hand and smashed it with my boot because you just can't do that. And that's what these kids do. It is illegal to tape someone without their consent. So mm. why is it now in a society we're allowed to do that? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's not right. You know, so if that's what you're going to, if that's what we're going to do, then where are the privacy laws then? There are none. You have no privacy. And that's just one example. I know it sounds like a bad example, but, you know, there are a lot of kids that just say wrong things to the wrong people. And then yet you have your girl in the back taking it. Now, what's that about? Yeah. You know, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, <laughs> society is definitely after, I think, changing for the worse. You know, it's kind of headed a scary way. It is. And I don't know, will it ever change back to what it was before? It should, because I, I feel as though, you know, be, even being a public figure, you do not have that right to privacy. And that's fine. But at the same time, you just you just don't go taping random people like that. And there are lawsuits for that once you do get busted for it, you know? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm kind of guilty, but the same, if someone's doing something stupid, I will videotape them, like at the airport. Um, you know, I videotaped a thing at CBS the other day. I, I don't know if I should put it out yet, but I might. It's a guy that I got into an argument with. I had my, my mask right below my nose, but I'm breathing on myself. I don't have anything. He's all the way to the front mm. telling me to pull it up over my nose. I said, no, I'm not going to. You can't tell me I can't breathe. How do you know I don't have asthma or something, which I don't? Yeah. But I went off on him. I called him a Karen. I told him to shut his vagina, you know, and he got very offended. I don't know why, but uh, yeah, then he eventually left. The, <laughs> he left the drugstore. Right. The woman was behind the glass with her thing, like off completely telling me, you know, I said, I get you feel empowered to sit there behind mm -hmm. that glass. She normally had like her hijabi on and you feel empowered to come here and tell me something, but you're a hypocrite. You know, mm. why haven't you, in the five years I've been here, why haven't you lived somewhere, like work somewhere else? You've done the same shit job, so shut your mouth. And it went like from zero to 1 million in like less than five seconds. So my friend works in the back. She's a Samoan girl. She's really big and she's so funny. She's like, yeah, don't tell her what to do. You can't come in here and tell customers what to do. So yeah, <laughs> but I taped it because it was great. It was freaking awesome. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll put it out there. You never know. It's a thought. It's definitely a thought. <laughs> it is a thought. And like the Machine Gun Kelly videos, when I talk about that, because I can't stand him. I just think he's like the worst poser ever. Like you get these white kids from suburbia who like think they're gangster. You know, I'm gangster till I meet a real one. Like go to South Central. I live in South Central when I first moved here. I still have friends that are crips that are down there. And like, it's the same shit. You know, you don't, you just don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. He's an absolute <laughs> wannabe. Right. I know. I love to knock him out. Then he went after like Conor McGregor. Like, how dare you? <laughs> I love what Conor McGregor said. Oh, I wouldn't hit him. I don't, I only fight men and he's right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's like hitting a girl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd actually, I'd pay to see that fight though, just to see Conor yeah, McGregor too. whip him around the, the ring, you know. I don't know if I'd pay. It'd just be like one second. Actually, I would pay it. <laughs> I don't know what that, what is, like, girls, like, his girlfriend's hot. Like, I don't know what she's doing, but maybe she has yeah. to do charity work or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Must be for uh, promotional purposes or something. She might have a new film coming out, you know. Yeah, and then some. Either that <laughs> or she felt sorry for him. <laughs> hey, I've done that before. I was dating a wrestler that I felt sorry for, and I stayed with him because I felt bad for him. But yeah, strictly out of pity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which um, 
which career that you've had was your favorite or would you go back to wrestling really this seems like it'd be the most fun most uh as we say here the most crack yeah it's been a lot of fun and like i still do the conventions and so forth Hmm. uh it's loyal fans for sure and it was a great great time like you know it's not the same as it was before i feel as though the only company that might have something interesting coming up i think aew is great Mm. but xpw wrestling is coming back hardcore wrestling and i think that's an excellent it's an excellent time for it i Mm. mean it's it's always made an impact to the point where other companies have mimicked things that ecw did so now xpw is coming back to do something and i think they're gonna i think they're gonna do really well brilliant hopefully they do anyway but yeah, I hope they do because I I like um uh hold on is this still going yeah I kind of like I I think they have a great product now I think it will be different I think that uh everyone like who's running is more school than they were before hmm. and I really hope Rob does extremely well with it I want him to do well because he I think he's been through a lot and he deserves it that's yeah. the owner Rob and he was one of my old bosses but I want him to do well I really do yeah yeah it'd be great to see before we. Go. Is there any uh, anything you want to leave the listeners with? A message for the listeners or anything? Yeah. Keep going to live shows. Um, only buy a shirt if you know the band. Seriously, that includes a knockoff. And just for, like, always buy the music. Please don't download it because it's been hard enough for a lot of bands in the past year and a half with COVID. And it's super important. Go to festivals listen to good music, quit buying the crap that's out there on the radio because there is nothing great on that radio anymore. And check out my podcast every Friday. It drops on Apple and on Spotify. It's called Crazy Train with a K. (laughs) Oh, and if you ever see me at a show, buy me a shot or have a shot with me. 